Hello class, this is Miss Augustine, and we are still working on Chapter 15. So this is going to be called Chapter 15, Part 2, and we're going to talk about how one determines pH and how one does a titration. So determining pH and titrations. So to determine the pH, um, there are several methods. Typically, we use some sort of a meter. So this is a pH meter. That's the first method or the method of choice. It's very accurate to within hundredths of a pH unit, and it measures the voltage that develops when electrodes are dipped into solution. So typically these electrodes are sensitive to um, the fact that you have free ions uh, when acids and bases are in aqueous solution. Um, so the second method is to use pH indicators, and these have varying degrees of accuracy depending on what you're using. So again, they're less accurate, but more convenient and more cost friendly. So typically they um, depend upon the use of brightly covered dyes, organic dyes, that are either weak acids or weak bases. And again, in solution, these dyes form an equilibrium with the conjugate bases. And again, the color of the indicator depends on whether the dye is in its acidic or basic form. So pH indicators or litmus strips, the, the one that you encounter most commonly is phenolphthalein. Um, and the phenolphthalein is colorless. Um, until it encounters a uh, base, and then in the presence of base, it turns a bright pink. So the, in, in the acidic form, it's colorless, and when it gets to be basic, again, it turns pink. It changes from colorless to pink in the pH range of pH of 8.2 to 10. And so here is a whole list of various uh, pH indicators, and some of them only change color between pH of 1 and, say, 1.4, some between 1 and 2.4, and so on and so forth. So if you're using phenolphthalein, its uh, color change occurs between 7 and 10, which is fairly broad. Um, so what we often will do, and there is a lab that we normally uh, do called the pH of households, where we use something called a universal indicator. And what that is is basically a mix of all these different indicators so that you can tell uh, the pH between 0 and 12 instead of just these little narrow ranges for the individual indicators. So an indicator reveals if the pH of a solution is above or below some certain value. It also uh, will disclose a specific pH in that color change range. And again, there are subtle differences in the hues that are discernible with slightly different pH values. So that's why often we'll use something called a universal indicator, which is a mixture of indicators that have a variety of colors and color change ranges. And typically, the universal indicator that we use um, is uh, sensitive from pH of 2 through 12. So again, broad range pH paper is also available. pH paper, again, has a coating of, for instance, the universal indicator. You would dip it in, um, and again, you would determine what the pH is by comparing the color of the paper to a reference chart. This is what you do typically for your swimming pool or your hot tub. So here is an example of universal indicator. So you'll see that it is sensitive, in this case, from a pH of 1 through 12. And then what we do in lab is we'll make our own uh, version of a universal indicator. And then we'll test things like vinegar and club soda and ammonia. And you'll see here that vinegar is looking like about a pH 4 matching the color. And here, your club soda looks like it's between 4 and 5, because it's kind of halfway between these two colors. And then here, the household ammonia, in this case, looks like it's between, I'm going to say, 9 and 10, as far as the pH goes. 
And so in lab, when we use the uh, pH of households, we make our own range here. And again, we run through uh, and get the various pHs. So this would be our reference. And then in these other wells, we would put uh, household ammonia or shampoo or vinegar or whatever we have on hand, soda. And then we would decide its pH based upon comparing it to the color. So I'm kind of sad that we don't get to do this lab, but it is what it is. So then we should talk about acid-base titration and how it relates to pH. So what is a titration? A titration is a process of determining the concentration of one substance or solution by reacting it with a known solution. So with a solution of another substance that has a known concentration. So for instance, if you had a bottle of some unknown concentration of hydrochloric acid, you could go and get your known solution of sodium hydroxide that was, for instance, one molar, and then you could calculate what your concentration of the hydrochloric acid solution was. So you slowly add the known substance until you reach the equivalence point between the two substances, the point where the amount of acid equals the amount of base, and you would determine how that was reached by using an appropriate indicator. So you would pick an indicator that would change color at the equivalence point, and then you would use that so-called endpoint, the point where your indicator tells you, yo, we're at the equal point, and that would then allow you to make calculations. So this is what a titration would look like. Um, you would use something called a burette, and it allows you to add dropwise your um, known solution to, for instance, your unknown solution, and then you're looking for that point where there's an equivalent amount of acid and base. So again, this would be um, an example where we would use phenolphthalein, and the phenolphthalein would start to turn pink when it became basic. And so if it turned this color, then you knew you went too far, for instance, that there's more base than there is acid. So you would then add some acid again, and you kind of go back and forth until you get the palest possible color, and that tells you that you've reached your end point or equivalence point. So the equation that we use, remembering that molarity is equal to moles per liter, if you're going to be determining what the concentration of, for instance, the acid is using a known base, you would calculate the molarity of acid. And the titration allows you to get at the volume of the acid where it is an equivalent amount to your volume of base and your known molarity. So again, note, we can only use this particular equation, MAVA equals MBVB, for a one-to-one -one mole ratio between acid and base. So for instance, if you were titrating HCl with NaOH, that's a one-to-one -one ratio, and you could then use this equation. And this is the equation we would use in lab for titrating hydrochloric acid with sodium hydroxide. If the ratio of acid to base, however, was not one-to-one, -one, let's say we were titrating sodium hydroxide with sulfuric acid, which has two hydrogens. That's not a one-to-one -one ratio. So normality is something that we use instead of molarity when we're doing titrations to figure out equivalent amounts of acids and bases, where normality is equal to the number of equivalents of solute per liter of solution. And so the equation we use is N normality is equal to lowercase n, the number of moles of equivalence, times the molarity. So normality is equal to the number of equivalence times molarity, where an equivalent is one mole of H plus or one mole of OH minus. So if we were to ask what is the normality of a 0 0.050 molar calcium hydroxide solution, we could remind ourselves that one mole of calcium hydroxide produces two moles of hydroxide ion, 
So using this equation where normality is equal to number of equivalents times molarity, our number of equivalents per mole is two equivalents, so we would multiply two times the molarity and that would result in 2 times 0 0.050, and so the normality of a 0 0.050 molar calcium hydroxide solution is 0 0.10 normal. And we will talk about this more as we get into calculations. So I'm going to stop here. This is Ms. Augustine signing off.